it is time to bring in our friends from the Lakeville Journal. Uh, Cynthia Hotswinder is in the middle studio. Good morning, Cynthia. Good morning. So is Anne Day. And Good morning. And, and there's Anne. We and we also have Cynthia. So no, Cynthia, yeah. Anne, and Janet. Hello, Janet. Hi. Hello, Janet. Hi. So Hi. we are all set for the Lakeville Journal this morning. We skated in. <laughs> you lived. No, no, I, we lived. I, yeah. tr- I tried to get a message for you guys not to park in the back part. I know. Room. I should have, you know, as soon as I parked it and started walking, I was like, oh, I and, can't. Finish and did you can't. park in the back parking lot? I did. I parked where Joe usually parks. We're going to rope ourselves together. All right. Uh, well, <laughs> At least it was a little rock and roll parking. We'll get a little yeah. sled for you. To get it's, <laughs> it's better now than it was even a half an hour ago. All right. It's just, well, it's just You're so positive. I've been warning people all morning, don't yeah. don't park in that back parking lot. You sit down parking lot. It, and it's everywhere, every parking yeah. lot, so really be careful today. All right, we'll start off with uh, with uh, the Lakeville Journal's top story, and that is uh, regulations in the state could force uh, pay-as-you-throw to towns. And I remember when poor Peter Oliver brought Oh, my gosh, right? Oh, never. That's what, exactly what Janet said. She said, oh, Peter Oliver. It was it, it, <laughs> When that happened, when he brought it, it was like an earthquake. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we've all been covering, as a group, we need a support group. We've been covering this, um, the Salisbury Sharon Transfer Station conversations for, it feels like 20 years already. It mm-hmm. probably is 20 years, actually. Well, getting close. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so... We, you know, we've lived through the search for sites and the conversation about sites. And whenever people say like, "Oh, you didn't really look hard enough for a new site," we're like, "I didn't know that they, they looked. They looked really hard." But one of the early conversations they had was, "How do you make it pay?" And um, what people don't maybe understand is that our garbage gets put into the general hopper or the recycle. And um, there were a lot of efficiencies that. Um, were made there under uh, the really wonderful uh, Larry, I think his last name was Larry Burke, um, transfer station manager, who kind of looked at it and said, you're paying too much to have your basic garbage disposed of when you could actually be selling a lot of your recyclables. So he figured out a way that like the town transfer station is selling scrap metal and it's selling, you know, clothing and trying to encourage people to compost so that that wet, heavy food garbage isn't going into the um, the main garbage hopper. But there have been a lot of changes, and there's um, some concern about um, single-stream recycling and the future of our being able to sell all that single-stream recyclable plastic. And so the state is coming up with new regulations, and it's looking like we may be moving to a future of actually pay as you throw, which a lot of towns have done successfully, where basically you go to the um, town hall and you buy stickers and bags and you you wrap your garbage into these um, special types of bags and um, throw them at that way so that you're not paying a flat fee no matter how much garbage you throw out, you're paying for how much garbage you throw. And, you know, there's a lot of questions about, you know, is that fair? Who's paying for this? Who's paying for that? So, of course, a certain portion of the transfer station fees are still paid from out of your tax dollars. So, um, you know, there's a lot of questions about uh, fairness and regressive taxing, et cetera. But um, I'm sure that we'll be hearing and discussing it all a lot as as time goes on. Uh, uh, An incredibly sad story uh, uh, that that hits home uh, about uh, our war against terror is a Pine Plains uh, resident, Shannon uh, Smith-Kent, was killed in that explosion. Right, a a 35-year-old woman who grew up in Pine Plains, and I think everybody (coughs) in our area saw on the news um, the story about a a suicide bomber um, came to a cafe (coughs) and there was an explosion and... um, I think 19 people were killed, including um, this young woman from uh, <coughs> from Pine Plains, and what a horrible waste of life. And, uh, yeah. It's a sad story. All yeah. right. Uh, right below that, though, uh, Great Barrington's uh, uh, Du Bois, uh, of course, W.E.B. Du Bois. Uh, uh, they're really on the memories, but they really, the town really, really has come forward to, to honor uh, what he did in his lifetime. So we're lucky that Bernie Drew, who's our one of our senior editor, um, is it, is it a recognized world expert on W. E. B. Du Bois and um, re- respected historian. And we had heard that the Clinton A. M. E. Zion Church up in uh, Great Barrington was being renovated finally, and um, so Bernie sort of checked in and gave an update on the renovation, which is being largely done by um, two architects, Mario Gooden. Um, but also John James from Ashley Falls, who is a very respected local architect um, and did a lot of work um, up at uh, the Shaker Museum in, in Pittsfield. 
Um, but Bernie, because he's Bernie, adds a lot of information about like who is W. E. B. Du Bois and you know sort of what was his connection to this area and why is he important to us. All right, uh, you've got a picture of a story that we've been covering here, and that's the uh, three farmers and an educator that uh, decided to try to stop a delivery uh, to Cricket Energy and uh, were eventually arrested. Sometimes life is just as interesting as a TV show, and this is one of those moments because, like, how often does this happen? So um, Cricket Valley Energy, the, the, p- the power plant is almost constructed. It's almost done. And there's a lot of questions, you know, still from people about the quality of the air and whether it will continue to run. And I think that what people don't necessarily understand is that the federal government requires that there be base power production so that people keep saying, well, why can't we use, you know, solar power or water power? And those are not fully reliable sources of energy. So that the government requires that there be something that can, you know, always be generating enough power for the area. So when Andrew Cuomo um, shut down the uh, power, the nuclear power plants at Indian Point, which he felt were too close to New York City, somebody had to replace the 2,000 megawatts of power that were being produced there. So this is a plant that's um, goal is to produce 1,100 megawatts of power. It's supposed to be the cleanest burning plant in the world when it's completed. But people are still concerned about it. And certainly it's not, you know, a beauty sight on, on the highway at this point. So um, a group of farmers with backing from a group called Sane Energy got a very cute old 1950s Massey Ferguson tractor that it's incredible. Like It probably doesn't even run. I think they had to push it out into the road. And then just like on TV, they chained themselves to the tractor. And, you know, I have to say that took some courage because if you've ever been out on the road when they're doing a delivery to Cricket Valley, it's very intimidating. The cops are not fooling around and they jump out and they go, you pull over to the side street. So here are these guys that stood out there in front of a half mile long convoy of uh, Connecticut State Troopers and truckers and just kind of calmly said, no, we're not going to move. We're, we're registering a protest. And certainly their voices were heard. Um, and as far as we can tell from watching the video of it, it was a, a very peaceful conflict and everybody behaved well. All right. Uh, I just, uh, so, so Cricket Energy was publicized in newspaper stories and everything while well, the for whole years. thing was good for years. Yeah. And I'm just, I, I'm all for, for, for being upset and wanting to protest something. But because you found out about it too late, because of whatever reason, to do it now after. <laughs> As it's being built. Um, and so what one of the protesters said was, um, you know, they, they just, t- they didn't renew the permit for a power plant in the in the Hudson Valley. And so I'm not really sure why. I'm going to guess that it was probably a very old, very polluting power plant. It's going to be a very clean plant. Yeah. But what's going to really shut down these plants, if anything does, is if they're able to find a way to make renewable energy storable in batteries. And once that does, the government, the, the power grid will always go to the cheapest, yeah. cleanest energy that's produced and at some point this power plant may become obsolete and that's what we'll do it is when renewable energy is more reliable all right uh in kent uh women held a protest that's right it was part of the national protest and a lot of women turned out in spite of what was horrible weather and you know a lot to protest and they had their signs up and they had a a young woman a law school student who spoke and a a nice uh, a nice outing for everybody despite the weather and uh, i love the uh uh, the Lakeville connection to the re-release of the uh, crime books. Right, George Simenon, the Meg Ray novel, uh, uh, thrillers, crime stories, and also a lot of novels. And Simenon was a teacher at, at Hotchkiss and talks about Lakeville in his autobiography. And Penguin has released new translations of his many, many, many works. Yeah, on page uh, A3, I love the story on... Don't skip Ann Day's photo of the oh. barred owl. I, yeah, that oh. is so incredible. Very important. So and I heard that there was a bobcat fox face off in her yard yesterday. We had a, exactly we had a standoff in our yard, bobcat versus beautiful fox. Well, I I, I hope the fox got away. They both did. <laughs> they both got. They both ran away because my brave little dog Lola went and barked them away. Okay. <laughs> How close were you when you took that picture of the owl? So close, um, Marshall. I was as close to that owl as I am to you. And even when I got out of my car with a very intimidating long lens, the owl continued to stare at me nonchalantly 
and <laughs> didn't budge. And then I started waving my hands because I wanted him to fly because I love to see a picture of a flying owl. But he wouldn't move. And then finally I threw something and he flew away and I didn't get the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Serves you right. <laughs> Serves me right. All right, now let's go on to the Sharon Medicine Show because I my first doctor was Dr. Goodernach and uh, he's part of the uh, century's one of Sharon. Right. This is a really interesting show. I actually went when they had the tree lighting in Sharon. It's very extensive and it's very research and there's um, part of um, Deb Alexianus' story is about how there's just tons of written information which you don't normally see at a historical society show. It's not just objects. It's really a history and you know with photos and everything. Very interesting show. Read her article and definitely go see it. Um, and then Paul Ramuni is back with his wonderful accordions. He's got that museum in North Canaan. How cute is that? And um, just the nicest man. I've never heard anybody say he wasn't just the nicest, nicest guy. And he's giving a concert and doing a talk about his new book, which is the stories of all the accordions, which are fascinating. Um, and it will be free concert and book signing Saturday, February 9th at 2 o'clock at Gear. All right. So uh, uh, on the new side of things, we've got confusion in Canaan and uh, new sidewalks possibly in Kent. It feels like there's over... <laughs> well, there are overlapping issues going on with this B. Metcalf processing plant in Ca in East Canaan, which is a sort of largely rural part of town, but also there are, you know, quarries there. But um, people in town feel very strongly about this plant, uh, this processing um, process not being allowed to continue. And there's been um, suit, countersuit, um, harsh words between uh, town officials um, ongoing, and we'll hope that this resolves itself nicely uh, for all involved. All right. Uh, you've got a uh, uh, nice story about the Green Cafe uh, growing, uh, and uh, their menu has expanded, and that's nice to have that there in the center of uh, Lakeville. And they're also applying for the liquor license, so it's going to become the the restaurant's going to become a more and more important part See, of a very popular gym. It's great about the liquor license. You could be like me. You can go in there. You can try to lose weight, and when you don't lose weight, just you go, go have drink a beer. I that. love that <laughs> idea. Man. Yeah. Right. Just relax. My dad used to go out. My dad would go out, and he would act, he'd play tennis so hard for hours and hours, come home soaking wet, and be like, yeah, "Need a beer right away." Just go to the Green Cafe, have a nice fat sandwich. You could you could the make pork belly food, sandwiches, and then and, and drink some alcohol, and go home and say, "I was at the gym." <laughs> <laughs> and if it gets out of control, right. Leslie Sherman's husband, Jason, does alcohol um, <laughs> counseling upstairs. All right. Uh, Stafford, you've got a story of Bangle back on track at Stafford Motor Speedway. Yeah, a guy from, grew up in Colbrook, yeah. lives in Norfolk, um, and um, he's a, a stock car racer. As many, you know, there's a lot of people around here who quietly are race car drivers. Right. I guess it's not that surprising. So he's getting ready for the Stafford Motor Speedway spring season starting in April. All right. Uh, you've got the, the Mountaineer Weekend Review, also the... A student of the week. Yes, we have a lot of swimming. We have student of the week, um, Mackenzie Hunter. We have another one coming up in our next issue, I believe. And then most important, the ski jumps are back February 8th to 10th. And we have at our office today all of the SWASA volunteers who work so hard. There's a lot of them out there making snow. I'm sure today is a miserable day for them. Um, and we'll hope that it gets cold again before February 8th, 9th, and 10th for all of the SWASA fun. And um, we also have the volunteers at our office today putting together the massive, very well-supported SWASA publication that you get when you buy your ticket for the jumps. I don't worry about the cold. It's going to come in Wednesday night and Thursday and then stay and get really bad. Oh, week, good. So don't worry about that. Great. Uh, a town and school at odds over tuition in Winstead. Yes, it's the Gilbert School, and there's questions about, you know, the Gilbert School is a complex, problematic um, place for Winstead. It's um, a private school, but it's got all of the Winstead students go there, and they're sort of having a conversation about what the tuition should be. And they also have the international program with a lot of students from China, which has been struggling. So um, a, a difficult moment for that school. All right. I want to go on to the uh, opinion page. Uh, a fairly long uh, editorial about staying engaged with the state legislature. That's right. And, you know, when we think of government right now, certainly we think of the fact that our federal government um, is partially closed down to the detriment of so many people. And we thought, well, should we write about that? But then we think, boy, by the time the paper comes out, won't they be open? Mm -hmm. Well, that hasn't happened yet. We, you know, so we'll encourage them to find a way to do that. In the meantime, let's think about our state. And, you know, the elections were in November. Uh, earlier this month, we had our representatives uh, sworn in, and now they're down to work, and it's a long session. Um, in an odd-numbered year, it's a six-month session, and it'll be there till June. Pay attention, because what they're doing, as you see just by that one story on the front page about pay-as-you-throw um, for trash, 
there are, there are lots of things they're addressing that will affect our lives directly, and it really ha- pays to keep in touch with your legislators and to see what they're doing on our behalf. It's it's just important. The state of Connecticut has got to do a lot of money saving, and a lot of it's going to come back on the backs of residents. That's uh, for sure. Yeah, it's yeah. not just about the election. It's about yeah. the governing. Yeah. Uh, and you've got lots of letters and uh, lots of great columns as well. We really do, and uh, it's it's great to see such a variety of topics in our letters and all really uh, interesting. So take a look through those. We thank Kay Blass for mentioning how poetic Tim Abbott is. His last Nature's Notebook really inspired her, and uh, thanks for that. Um, yeah, we have Dick Ollis talks about lessons learned in how to cover demagogues, and very interesting. Uh, let you see who he's comparing the present demagogue to. Um, Larson, uh, or the U.S. Rep. John Larson, uh, the Democrat in the first district, is working on Social Security, and uh, there's really something to that. So uh, take a read on Chris Powell's column and a wonderful piece by Virujan Frangian, just a, a beautiful piece on Martin Luther King. And M.A. Duca talking, uh, you know, he does write short, and he's pithy, and he is always fun to read. And don't miss a beautiful picture by Ann Day where uh, geese did take flight, <laughs> unlike that owl. And don't forget uh, the uh, Steiner cartoon. <laughs> yes, don't forget the Steiner cartoon. It's very, you know, we won't even try to describe it. You have to see it to appreciate it, and it's really good. So. Oh. You know, also what's, what's interesting is, to, in turning back the pages, if you go 25 yeah. years ago in January of 1994, uh, 18 to 21 inches of snow. Ugh, right. Biggest form of the year. Exactly. So it's either cold, rain, or snow. Take your pick. Right. But also, may I interrupt for one second? Also, in 1919, Mr. Bradley dug up a parsnip from his garden. <laughs> Well, isn't that incredible? And I love that in one. the <laughs> same year, Mr. Martin was taking ice from Lakeville Lake, so go figure. Yeah, Mr. Bradley was tough, and I, uh, you know, well, I'd really love to know the story behind those parsnips. <laughs> All right, one more story we talk about, and it's on the back. It's on page A10, but the Lime Rock Park issue is going to go to the Supreme Court. It's going to bypass the appellate court. Uh, they've, people have already spent thousands of dollars on lawyers, and this should save everybody more money. But it's very interesting that they just decide, you know what, we're going to skip the appellate. Yes, and we just know, so, we just know so, what's going to happen here. Whatever happens here is going to go to the Supreme Court anyway. Yeah. Um, and just so people don't feel like we're, we're hiding that, there was just so much news this week yeah. that, that, that ended up on the jump page. But, yes, this is a big deal, and it's something that actually the Planning and Zoning Commission in the town, that everybody seems to want them to do so that they can finally resolve it. And it's a question about, you know, who has whose powers supersede who's in, in the town. Yeah, it's a, a town and state battle. That's pretty amazing. We'll see what happens. With town it. and town battle. Town and town, town and state. Uh, town, right, town, 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 state, that's, town. That's, yeah, that's, and back and forth. And so, yeah, initial submissions are due at the state Supreme Court February 22nd. We will be on it. All right. So now? Dun, 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 dun. dun, 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 dun. And? And Dave. Oh, compass, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so yeah, busy thinking about the ice and the parsnips. Um, <laughs> we have a, this, there's a, 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 an author, Jack Kelly, will be coming to speak at the White Hart about a, the Pullman strike, um, which was um, the 18, ni- during the 18, ni- 1894 it started. But just so, if we think things are tough now with the government shut down and Teachers on Strike in Los Angeles, if you read this book, you'll see how really violent and crazy and dangerous it got. Um, Eugene Debs, who was really quite an amazing labor organizer, got everyone to strike against the Pullman Company, and it got bloody, and it got angry, and it was... Something's happened. Uh, Well, the cats jumped on the wall. (laughs) See, it anyway, it's, story a, it's that a good got book. Going. He's yeah. speaking at the White Hart on February 7th at 6 o'clock. Also, I'd just like to mention that last week I made a mistake and said that the Sharon Playhouse, with their tribute to Candor and Ebb, Cocktails and Cabaret, 
Um, I had said it was the 27th. It's actually Saturday, January 26th. Cocktails begin at 5.30, and the performance starts at 6.30. It's going to be a fabulous evening. Everyone should go. It's this Saturday at um, 5.30. And I have... Um, there are so many photo shows. I didn't... I really want to review only one, so I have Carl Salader reviewing two shows. I reviewed two, but my favorite one, the one that is my lead story is a fellow called John Clark who's not just a photographer he's a painter and he makes these long exposure images with his iPhone he blows them up really large and then he paints on them and draws on them with pencil and pastel and they're quite beautiful and um, it's worth the drive up to Lenox to see that show um, he's at Sewn Fine Art in Lenox. And then we have an IMS teacher, Glenn Seelenbrandt, has an exhibit at Sharon Town Hall. It's been up for a while, but um, he was part of a movement in the late 90s that was involved with skateboarding and somehow, and I haven't quite figured out how, involved with Shepard Ferry, the artist who did the um, Obama Hope poster. Um, also, there is a new show at Place in Millerton, which is the wonderful collaboration between Joe Nosofsky and Mimi um, Harney and Sonny Hernandez. And Sonny has, a photo gal has an art gallery in the shop where they sell furniture and clothing. And the artist is called Joanna Lindsay. She's a New York City artist. Also, all iPhone pictures seems to be a trend. Um, and go see it in Millerton. And we also have a show of the Houstonic Camera Club, not iPhone pictures, all serious amateur photographers, some professionals, um, and it takes up that whole gallery space at Noble Horizons. And I would highly recommend that you go see it. And it's not that far away to all the, uh, the art show and the contest at India Mountain. Uh, they, they they think they debut that twenty the twenty sixth or the twenty eighth for the party as well. Oh, I, you know, I need to find out about that. They yeah, haven't they sent me anything. They usually send us stuff like a year. <laughs> I know. And we haven't heard I anything. I haven't gotten a, a word about it. So well, I, I will. I will remind. Out. I'm going to be speaking to Sam Posey today. I will remind them to get a hold of you. Anne, yeah, that would be great. Thank today. you. Well, and lots of things in calendar to do. So yeah, keep track of it. All right, well, that it. You got it all in, and now you guys have the most dangerous part of the day. And then we have to get back to that parking lot. We're so dumb. Like, as soon as I got out of the car, I was like, oh. No. It's one of those things, yeah. I, I, that, it's just the amazing. Bulb, the light bulb yeah. moment came You know if light. I'm not parked in the parking lot. It's, yeah, <laughs> next time you don't see any cars or just. Well, because sometimes <laughs> you guys move the cars before, like after we get in. Yeah. There's, there's a, 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 a complex <laughs> ballet of your autos out there. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank and, you. Uh, well, and we'll see you guys next week. Next we week. hope so. Yeah. All right. On crutches. Yeah. All right. That's it. <laughs> uh, that is this week in the Lakeville Journal. Of course, you can find the Lakeville Journal online, tricornernews.com. Also, you'll find them on Facebook, and you'll also be able to find this show at robinhoodradio.com. Click on On Demand. Click on This Week in the Lakeville Journal.